Howdy, howdy, folks. It's Tuesday, and it should hopefully be Tuesday when this actually goes out. And um, I'm GM Molly, and this is my first of my Q and A series. So, um, yeah, first question I get is, why don't you do a normal YouTube intro? Like, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. Like, what up, you boy? It's me, and you're gonna do this thing. And uh, no, it's not me. So yeah, um. Right, I've got some silly questions, I've got some sensible questions, and I've got quite a lot of like personal taste questions. And these were gathered from my Twitter, my Facebook, my Discord community, um, yeah, and just places in general. Um, links to all that stuff down below. Blah, 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 blah. So yeah, right, first question. What is your favourite dice? Um, my favourite dice in terms of the standard poly set is the Humble D12. Um, the, you know, redhead stepchild of... The dice world but i like them they spin really well and in terms of um what's your favorite dice as in what dice do you have from your collection uh, i normally use i only use three types of dice i use chessix white with black numbers chessix black with white numbers and chessix yellow with yellow numbers um yeah that's that's all i use i don't really have a need for fancy dice i i used to have a dice bag and quite a significant collection and then it got stolen so yeah uh, next question is how many dice is too many for me realistically more than five sets um i have um five poly sets two white two black one yellow and then i have 10 d6 in each color 10 d10s in each color and five d20s in each color just so i can play any game that kind of pops up yeah uh, and of course the question that for some reason people love asking me uh, how do you hide your shame uh, both hands into a lot like that over your junk see it makes like a, it makes like a nice makes like a, a nice merkin and you can move really easily so yeah remember it's both hands into lock over your junk that's how you hide your shame Right, so, sensible question time now. Uh, first one is, what do you do about a potential TPK if you can see it coming imminently in a game? Um, honestly, let it happen. So, I would like to think that in my games, I am honest enough with my players that things are signposted well enough that if they're getting into a situation which is likely to cause a TPK, they know they're in a situation which is likely to cause a TPK, basically. There's no kind of, yeah, random trap type stuff. Um, yeah, and because, like, losing is part of games. Sorry, like, your party might die, your characters might die, that's why there's a risk to adventuring, and I'm... I won't say like I'm a combative GM, but I am very much of the school of thought of if your character dies, well, fuck, basically. Um, personal question, what was the most fun TPK you experienced as a DM or player? So as a player, we had what was effectively a TPK as we were playing a game where it was like post-apocalyptic in a fantasy world and my character and another character were holed up behind a barricade and we had like a repeating crossbow and um, the other players were supposed to come up this corridor towards us and we would question them and some of them would be bad guys and some of them would be players and that lot and me and the other guy that were with me behind the barricade we were being full on paranoid and the other players refused to role play. They just kept walking. So we were like, well, and yeah, I understand I was being a douchebag, but I was young and I think we killed, I think we killed about 14 characters that tried to join the party because none of them would take part in the role play. Uh, as a DM, the most entertaining one was probably, um, there was a, a gold coin that if you spent it, came back to you it was a single gold coin if you spent it it came back to you and the party apparently decided this was the most powerful magical item you could possibly ever create because i don't know you could buy a castle at the rate of one gold piece a day 
Um, but yeah, so there was the player that had it was already paranoid, so they had set up various contingencies, and then obviously at night they get robbed, and then the guy gets stabbed, and then another guy gets stabbed, and then they thought they were under attack, and da 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 da. And in the end, it ended with the wizard player who had the contingency dying and the fireball that they had on their cast on their body for if they died going off and killing the rest of the party that was quite fun all over one gold piece that could return to your wallet once a day so yeah um next one do you have any tips for making combat interesting for larger groups like six or more players um no well actually yes i do i'm being facetious i'm not a huge fan of combat in games i, I find it takes too long but in general terms, you want to try and encourage your players to be thinking ahead. So you want your players to be looking at the battle and thinking, OK, well, I'm fifth in initiative, so I'm going to think about kind of what I want to do. And then when it gets round to me, I can go, OK, I'm going to do this thing. And as a counter to people who I know will say this of, oh, but things can change between where we are and when it gets to my turn. Well, if you're paying attention, you'll notice that things have changed and you'll have a head start on your choice. I am honestly convinced that there are players that I have run games for that as soon as I look away from them and I start talking to another player, they just go... until focus comes back to them because the number of times we've had games where it's been like hey this thing's happening you know fighting doing moving yeah 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 and every single time it gets around to their initiative they go right what's happening and it's like well it's on the table in front of you there's miniatures you you have your little dude Follow the fuck along! Um, yeah, so encourage your players to take some of that load off of you and keep it moving. Um, one of the most powerful things you can do is just start counting down. A combat round is meant to be six seconds. If someone's there going, mm, oh, oh, and I move there, and then I'll go, and then, mm, and then I, and then I, mm, and then I, do, and then I, just start going five, four, three, two, one and if they get to the zero then they lose their action they just stand there going uh once again i understand that people are going to say but that's very unfair you're robbing people of their choice in combat but yeah yeah i i got nothing for you just yeah that's what i am doing because i'm there to play the other players are there to play we're not there to watch steve spend 15 minutes to decide to catch Eldritch Blast for the 85th time that session. Um, whew, whew, breathe. Right, another, um, let's see, choice ones, choice ones. Um, what is the single worst mechanic you have ever encountered? Um, the critical fumble table from, oh, I forget what product, it was a Green Ronin product back in the OSR 3.5 days. There was a critical fumble table. If you rolled a 1, you then rolled a D100. No, it wasn't even a D100. It was a D20 on the table. Um, and if you rolled a 1 to a 5, you killed yourself. Uh, but we're talking stuff like we were playing in a game. The Barbarian rolled a critical fumble, insisted on using the critical fumble table, rolled a 1. So it said you decapitate yourself and the two nearest party members to you, killing you instantly with no save. And our party of four became me, the bard, stood there going, well, fuck. Um, yeah, I hate those type of lol random tables, but the players I was playing with at the time loved them. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's probably the worst one. Critical fumble tables, which have, like, fatal results for players and stuff. Yeah, you just, just miss me with that. Um, next one, uh, tips for making completely new players feel welcome and integrated into a group of more experienced players. <sighs> Except that there's going to be some awkwardness. You cannot have people just join and, you know, because role playing is an inter interpersonal, there we go, interpersonal activity and a social activity at that as well. 
so accept that there's going to be a little bit of awkwardness um and this comes down to group management talk to your group like adults let them know that there's going to be new people joining the game and that those new people are going to want to feel welcome um yeah and that's basically it like don't make them the spotlight but likewise don't ignore them but also particularly if they're joining midway through a campaign allow them to understand that you know if you if they're joining a long-running campaign that there are elements within the world that you have developed specifically towards the party that you were running for so it might be that their plot threads have to be interwoven over a period of time so they may not be in the spotlight from square one um yeah so temper expectations and talk to your group like adults uh right last one last one last one last one um, oh, tell us your best and worst random players from shows. So for those of you who don't know, uh, back in the before time, before the um, Backstreet Boys reunion tour, I used to run games at a lot of shows. Love doing it, like being a pro GM. In fun fact, if you want to hire me, I can be hired. Email me at gmmoley at gmail.com and we'll sort something out. Um, I have very reasonable rates. Uh, yeah, so I do a lot of intro games. Probably my best player I ever had, and it sounds ridiculous but it was so there was a dad with his son who was i think his son was about 10 10 11 and like his son was the standard proto nerd like he just discovered pratchett he'd just discovered dungeons and dragons he'd you know he he was just getting he was at the crest of that downward spiral into true nerdness and um the dad arranged for me because I, I had a reputation for being good for running with very new people for me to run with the son but then obviously the dad couldn't just ditch the daughter who was about seven six she was definitely younger than the brother but not by a huge margin um yeah so he the the daughter joined in as well and she was brilliant absolutely brilliant she played one of my pre-generated characters called shoran who is um a human fighter who is the leader of the group and um he's very like i want to be a hero let's go over there you know he's that kind of slightly bossy thing and she got it perfectly she was it was brilliant because she was just like trying to boss the party around despite not knowing what to do and her dad, who was playing Thay, the advisor type character, was trying to kind of temper her and explain, no, 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 we don't have to just rush in. And she was like, no, rush in. Um, and she really, really improved the game, really improved the game. Um, it was quite funny watching the group just having to scramble to keep up with her. Um, yeah, that was, that, was, that, was, that, was a, that was a good moment. Probably my worst rando player it's not a specific player. So I have a worst player, um, but that's because he was an out-and-out -out avowed white supremacist, which popped up about an hour and 14 minutes into a three-hour session, um, and that just killed the game. But that's not a funny story. Probably the worst rando players you get at shows... Um, are the Teflon Tonys is the nickname or the oh what, what did my mate used to call them the Elastic Ernies which are players who refuse to engage with anything they just no everything is at arm's length I'm always safe I'm always stood in a corner I'm always up against the wall I'm always 10 foot pole I'm always in the other room I don't talk to anyone I don't look at anything I don't everything is the most defensive possible thing they can do until there's loot and then they just and they're immediately where the loot is um you get a lot of those a lot of them at shows and some of them will catch on um particularly if you phrase it to them like hey imagine this like a movie imagine this like star wars but some of them just never do and it can really drag a game down because you've got this character who particularly if you're running like a newbie game you're talking about a group i tend to pre-generate characters so that each member of the party has a thing they do 
So, you know, this guy can do this, but then the other two people on the spoke shore up what they can do, but without them, it's more difficult. And, you know, if you're unlucky and it's the, the fighter, say, that gets the Teflon Tony, then you've got their frontline fighter who refuses to engage in combat at all. Um, yeah, and you get a lot of them. You get a lot of them. I'm get, I'd am say probably... On an average show, I will run between 6 and 15 games over the course of a weekend. And I reckon probably every third... Yeah, maybe third or fourth game, you'll get one. Um, and yeah, it's just... They're not bad. Like They don't ruin the game. But they do make the game more difficult. And quite often, other characters can become resentful. And if you try and call them on it, their usual line is, well, that's just how I play games. And so, yeah. So, um, thanks for people who sent in questions. Uh, I have some questions that I didn't... Oh, that way, sorry. For some reason, my camera's backwards. I have some questions that I didn't answer. Um, so there'll be another one. When's my next Q&A? It's going to be next month sometime. Um, so, yeah. So the next time I upload a video on a Tuesday, that'll be a Q&A. If you have any more questions, leave them down below or join one of the communities, Discord, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, and ask away there. I'll generally answer most questions. This is just collecting some to be able to answer them on, on video. My next video is going to be up on Friday. Ah, and Friday is going to be a little bit different. Friday is going to be actually playing games. So I don't know if I'm going to be recording footage of like a digital RPG or if I'm going to be running a game with someone it depends on how um, schedules and timescales link up but Friday is when the next video will be going up so yeah um, thank you for watching like favorite subscribe bell um, join things be nice back my patron black lives matter trans rights are human rights don't mess with statistics, understand how numbers work. Keep having fun and keep being awesome. Yeah. Bye-bye.